going over 15 incredible secret tips and tricks you need to know in Modern Warfare Zombies. And I assure you, by the end of the video, you will have learned something new, including how to spawn in with up to a million points straight away, to be infinitely revived as a solo player without self-revives, and how to spawn in with essentially infinite free monkey bombs. There's going to be a lot of Zombies content here on the channel, so if you like the sound of that and you enjoy this video, consider subscribing so you don't miss out. But the first tip is on the infinite monkey bombs, because in your loadout in the tactical slot, you need to be using decoy grenades. These essentially work as mini monkey bombs that you throw down and after a few seconds, all of the zombies nearby, including special zombies, will be attracted to the decoy. And what's amazing about these is that you can always replenish these by going to an ammo refill. You can hold up to three decoys at a time and these are honestly going to be lifesavers when you're running in the high threat zone. No other tactical grenade comes remotely close to the decoys. My next tip is something that you might not realize with the pack a punch machines. The way these work is you can only pack a punch to tier 1 in the low threat, tier 2 in the medium, and tier 3 in the high. But if you're in the medium threat and haven't yet pack a punch, you don't have to go back to the low threat in order to pack a punch. You can use the medium threat's pack a punch to upgrade once and then pack a punch again to level 2. This next tip is one that you should remember for the rest of your Modern Warfare Zombies games, and that is that the Napalm Burst ammo mod is the most effective mod to use against any special or elite boss zombie, as the fire damage that it emits is the strongest thing to use, especially against the epic abomination in the high threat zone, against mimics, and against disciples. There is no reason to not use any other ammo mod. This next tip will teach you how to have infinite revives both as a solo and in co-op on Modern Warfare Zombies, and it is absolutely incredible. And this is through doing the friendly dog Easter egg. If you aren't aware, if you kill zombies with explosive weapons or with explosives such as molotovs or the hellhounds fire killing zombies, there's a chance that they will drop chunks of flesh. Now, if you use these chunks of fleshes at dog houses, you can get yourself a friendly dog that will both kill zombies and revive you. But what you might not realize is that you can get a version of this dog, which is a tier three version, which will have infinite health and be able to revive you infinitely. And the way to do this is you need to get yourself four chunks of flesh, go into the high threat zone and make your way to the bottom left area here, where you'll find a singular dog house location. By feeding it four pieces of meat, it will spawn a tier three version of the dog, which will never be able to be killed by zombies. And even as a solo player, this dog will revive you each and every time, even if you don't have a self revive kit. You can run around the entire map and the dog will just keep respawning. It will always save your life. And from the looks of it, it can never die from zombies, even if a zombie horde is swarming it. Doing this will allow you to have a stress free time in the high threat zone, farming all the different contracts to try and get the best rewards from them. And yes, even without self revives, the dog will still get you. And this next tip goes hand in hand when dealing in the high threat zone. Due to how fast the zombies are in this area, it is very hard to outrun them. But if you combine stamina up as well as having your fists out, you will always be faster than anything the high threat zone will have sprinting towards you. In order to have your fists out, you need to only be carrying one weapon. So make sure you choose to infill whilst only carrying one weapon into your loadout or if you have two then you should drop the one that has the lowest rarity because in order to be the fastest around the map in any zone you need to be running around with your fists out with stamina my next tip is something which a lot of players actually don't know how to do which is really surprising and that is how to invite other players into your squad or to request to join other teams the beauty of this game mode is that you can come across other real random players in the game with you and you can choose to invite them to your squad or to join theirs but the actual process of doing it is very simple all you need to do when your controller is hold up on the d-pad and then you'll see a list of options that are all in a certain direction using your right stick you then need to go ahead and move it over to the far right to invite nearby players to join your squad or move the stick slightly further down and right to request to join nearby squad if you're communicating in game chat and it seems like other random squads want to join up to help you out or vice versa then this is how you do it and if you get a pop-up that a player is requesting to join your squad and if you want to accept them or not you again hold up on the d-pad and go over to the option to accept or if you don't want to you can go on the option to decline this next tip is going to be going over the best and the fastest contracts to do in your modern warfare zombies games to complete for the maximum amount of time and efficiency because overall you only have one hour inside of these matches time can go very quickly and you want to be making the most of that time to get the most points so the contracts that i recommend you do starting off is the 
weapon stash. This is such a simple contract, which only takes about two minutes to complete. You don't even have to be in the same room as the weapon stash. As long as you're somewhere near it, progress will count for this mission. Another very easy mission to do is the outlast contract, where all you have to do is again, stay inside of a room for a certain amount of time until the contract is complete. You will have some zombies that will spawn in, but there is nothing overly difficult about this contract at all. It is incredibly simple. Another recommended contract for efficiency is going to be spore control. If playing in a team of three, each player just picks up two of those grenades. They choose areas to throw them down. And once the spores are ready to be shot, you should be able to complete this in under a minute. The deliver cargo mission is also great because you don't have to shoot any zombies during this mission. You simply have to drive from one area of the map to another and you get given a vehicle for doing so. And once you're fully geared up and more powerful than the threat level you're in, you can take on bounties and complete them super quick. But on the topic of super strong weapons, this next tip is going to show you how you can get the most powerful rarity gold weapon inside the game as quickly as possible without using any ether wrenches. From the start of a game of Modern Warfare Zombies, you want to try and amass 5,000 points by completing two to three contracts. Once you've done that, you want to get a vehicle and drive over to a wall buy weapon that is marked within the high threat zone. There is a high chance that the wall buy weapons in here are going to be gold rarity, which is the strongest rarity possible and a rarity that you won't be able to upgrade your loadout weapon to because the max you can get to is the legendary purple color by just getting lucky with drops. This is a guaranteed way to get a gold rarity weapon that will be doing the most damage and you can take that into the low threat and the medium threat and be able to take out zombies really easily without the gun needing to be pack-a-punched and then you can start working on contracts to get more money to eventually upgrade it to the tier 3 pack-a-punch which will then give you the most powerful weapon possible to take on the zombies and bosses within the high threat zone. Now an item you'll come across within your zombies games that you just won't pick up all the time that you should is the turret circuit boards. The turrets in this game mode are absolutely bonkers and if you manage to find a circuit board you can equip them onto a turret and kill so many zombies especially if you do this in the high threat zone you can take down massive bounties and the mega abominations without even needing to shoot your weapon. They also last for a really long time and they're just generally really good support weapons to have. Now my next tip is a fantastic quality of life tip with the self revive kit. So if you go down with one equipped usually in other game modes like warzone or DMZ you'd have to manually open your backpack and then equip another self revive to put it back on. But if you're carrying multiple self revives and you go down and use one the next self revive in your backpack will automatically equip for you. Meaning if you go down again you'll be able to use that self revive kit again without having to equip it. Now this next tip is something which I don't see many random players taking advantage of and it really frustrates me and it's if you're carrying a special grenade like a monkey bomb or a casimir grenade and you find a different tactical grenade rather than losing one of the grenades by swapping it out you can literally stow the other grenade in your backpack and keep both being able to select which one you want at any time that way you can carry multiple monkey bombs and casimir grenades without having to make the sacrifice of only being able to equip one the next tip is how to predict the final exfil and how exactly it works i notice a lot of players get scared at the timer and leave even before the 45 minutes have counted down not realizing that they actually have another 15 minutes after but a lot of players get anxious about the idea of taking the final exfil because they don't know how to predict where it's going to be so let's take this game example here where the storm is already coming in and as you can see the exfil below zaravan suburbs has already been engulfed as well as the one at seaport district looking at this circle we can see easily that shaheen manor is going to be taken next and then pop off power will be lost you now need to look at the map and see which area of the map has the biggest amount of area space left once that circle comes a bit closer and we can see that all of military base and hadika farms are going to be the last to be swallowed by the gas so the final exfil is going to land there when there's around about four minutes or so left you will see the final exfil icon will start to appear on the map as well as where you can visually see it and all you need to do is drive to it and once you make it to that final exfil the exfil chopper will not leave until that counter on your screen goes all the way to zero so you have all the way until that time time to get inside that exfil chopper and then have it leave and there you go you will have taken the final exfil successfully.
My next tip is also focused around the X fills, and that's the fact that you can actually take an X fill in the storm if you call it in just before the storm goes over that X fill and that part of the map. As long as the X fill was called in before the storm went over it, you could be in the storm for 35, 45 seconds until the helicopter arrives, and you will still be able to X fill successfully. Now, a tip that's really simple, but something that you forget if you're farming contracts in the high tier zone is that you will lose armor plates really quickly. Quickly, and you can always buy spare armor plates from the buy stations. This is extremely useful as you can hold up to 17 plates with a large backpack. At that point in the game, if you're farming contracts in the high threat, you are going to have so many points that you won't have anything else to spend the points on. So it's always good to be stocked up on armor plates. This Modern Warfare 3 Zombies tip is absolutely crucial and not a lot of players realize this, but if you are reviving a dead player and you're about to be swarmed by zombies, the progress saves on a revive on a dead player. You can cleverly time a revive for a certain amount of time before then getting off the revive in order to run away from zombies to then go back to the body and continue the revive, resuming it from whatever level it got to. This is extremely useful as well in the high threat zone where death is likely to happen. And I know you've been waiting to see this one, but let's explain how to bring in points straight away. And if you try hard enough, you could spawn in with 999,000 points. Now, the way this trick works is that in a game of zombies you will want to naturally just occur a massive amount of points but as we all know when you exfil those points disappear but if you buy the perk tombstone or get the perk through the free perk easter egg and fully bleed out and die in your next game you can go back up to your tombstone and retrieve all of your loot which includes all of your points so if you have a crazy game of zombies where you've occurred 50,000 plus points all you need to do is go and die at an exfil point that you know you'll be able to get too quickly in the next game go up to your tombstone in the following game and you're able to immediately bring in all of those points if you combine this by getting tombstone soda again in this game and then go ahead and die at the end in your next game you'll be able to just get all your points back and you can keep rinse and repeating this for an infinite amount of time to always spawn in with points if you combine this with the tombstone easter egg to get the perk for free you can always have tombstone every single game and be able to constantly cycle through rounds where you will always have more points the following round you go in which is absolutely insane